Next, for anyone who fancies working in the glamorous world of TV, ha ha, then the chance to work as an extra in a well-known series or even a movie is going to be too good to resist. Agencies sign up aspiring actors with the promise that they can find them work as a so-called background artist. So one day you could be sitting in the CAF in Albert Square and the next in the waiting room of Holby City. But no matter how much fun it is, you're still going to want to be paid for any work you do, which is why the people in our next case have been left feeling, well, extra shortchanged. For many who are chasing the bright lights of Hollywood, one way to get your face on the silver screen and see if you've got what it takes to make it big is to get work as an extra. And you don't even need traditional film star looks. It doesn't matter what you look like, whether you're tall, short, fat, thin, they'll love you. What's more, it can be a great way of supplementing your income and earning a bit of extra cash. There are plenty of agencies eager to sign up hopefuls. For a fee, they'll find you work and make sure you get paid. But we've been hearing about one agent in particular who it seems hasn't been playing by the rules and the people he's let down are not at all happy about it. One of those is Steve Brunton, an experienced and highly versatile extra with hundreds of roles over the years. I've got police outfits, um, uh, I've got all sorts of stuff really, right? but as motorcycling, um, I'm a part qualified yachtsman, so if that ever came up. Uh, I can swim, obviously. So broad is Steve's range that when he saw an advert online asking for actors who could play zombies in a new TV drama series, he knew that was something he could pull off. So Steve sent off his details and within a few days received confirmation that he'd got the job. There was a, a few weeks work, a few days a week over a period of a month. The company Steve had signed up to work for, Zombie Extras, was run by a man called Johnny Lynch, who it seems had made quite a reputation for himself in the industry. But not an altogether good one. I was, I was told not to work with Johnny because he was um, a bit of a shark, really. He didn't pay properly and he bumped a few people and I was a bit wary of him. However, as he was keen to land the job, Steve decided to go ahead with it, although not without a discussion about the pay. And what about the money side of things? Did he spell out what you could expect to earn? Professional rates um, up to, I mean, it's £160 a day roughly, but you get um, uh, holiday money, you get early call money, you know, it can add up. You know, you can soon be getting £300 a day if, if uh, you're there for long hours over time. And sure enough, within 10 days of finishing the job, Steve received his wages, £540. So when he was asked back to do another job for the same company, he didn't hesitate to say yes. I think we did some training, a training day of uh, zombie movement training, which was quite fun. <laughs> um, what did that entail? <laughs> walking around like a zombie. Um, it was... Um, it was uh, movement training, basically. They wanted us to walk in a certain way, because the blue or not, zombies are different. So I've never seen a zombie. <laughs> Does that surprise you? <laughs> yeah, no. You get hungry zombies that are, you know, the flesh-eating type, and then you get ones that drag their lick and make, make a sort of a noise and stuff. So they, they wanted us to, to do a certain thing in a certain way. You know, so, uh, yeah. I mean, I had a great, a great time. It was a great place to work. But this time, the filming didn't have such a happy ending. Steve has been waiting since June 2014 to be paid. And despite chasing Johnny Lynch and zombie extras for the money, he's still more than £540 out of pocket. And we've heard about plenty of other people who did work for Johnny Lynch and haven't been paid. One of those is Jeremy from Croydon. He says he's been owed £200 since 2014, as he explained when I gave him a call. When he told you that he was going to pay you, did he spell out exactly how much money you would get? Um, it was agreed it was a natural minimum wage. Okay, so that's what you were expecting. And what did you end up with? Absolutely nothing. A quick look online reveals that Johnny Lynch has received decidedly mixed reviews for his performance. There are some people saying I worked for him and everything was fine, but by and large there's an awful lot of very abusive stuff saying that they were ripped off or didn't get paid when they thought they should have been or weren't paid as much as they thought they deserved. So, um, on the whole, he doesn't come out of it very well, I'd say. 
So it seems Johnny Lynch has become famous for all the wrong reasons. We tried to contact him but had no response to our calls, letters or emails. But Beck2, the union that looks after extras and supporting artists, says non-payment is a problem it takes very seriously. Beck2 gets calls every week uh, of every month of every year about uh, people being exploited. And people who are film extras are the most vulnerable in our industry, so it's very common for us. Do non-payments happen quite a lot? We do get lots of cases, and we're quite proactive in terms of chasing those monies up when we are actually contacted by individual union members. But for anyone who's hoping to become an extra or actor in the TV and film industry, Spencer has a few pointers to keep in mind. There's certain checks that they can do to safeguard in terms of whether the agency is legitimate or not. They need to find out whether, how long they've been established. They need to find out whether they're registered. They need to look on social media as well. But the problem is, is there's no regulations around agencies at the moment that safeguards particular individuals. And there's nothing to stop somebody who may have been shown to be at fault setting up again and doing it all over again? We see it all the time in terms of agencies mushrooming up, subsequently disappearing and then starting up again. And there's nothing in terms of the legislation that we can do about it or the government or anyone else, unfortunately. As for Steve, he'll now be much more cautious about who he works for. And he certainly doesn't plan on doing more jobs for Johnny Lynch. I'd never work for him again. I, would, I wouldn't have worked for him in the first place, but I don't know.